I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I keep forgetting. But look what Sean Hawking, Sean Hawkins did for me. Isn't that wonderful? That's going to take pride of place in my workshop, Sean. I really didn't expect that. Thank you very much. Thanks for the wood you sent as well. This video has a bit of a Neolithic theme to it, I think. As I've been sent a package um, from customers, Frank, um, he sent me some gifts as well, so it's a bit of an unboxing. Anyway, uh, that can wait. That can wait. This is uh, the Neolithic, part of the Neolithic um, thing. When I pulled it out, I was, oh, I didn't know what to think. I've got a lot of work to do. It's very heavy, it's like stone. Um, but thankfully, it's been stabilised in resin, uh, because I've heard it's very brittle to work with. But it's been stabilised. That's a piece of mammoth, woolly mammoth, which went extinct in the last ice age. Incredible. So that's going to be part of Frank's uh, handle. He sent me some gifts. He sent me this, which I don't know what it is. Uh, I've opened it and it, I think it's some sort of a seasoning or perhaps a, a soup, I'm not sure. So um, maybe someone can tell me what that is. Um, he sent me some teas and uh, a chocolate, which I'm going to have in a minute. And he sent me this, which I'm uh, very pleased with. It's a uh, firebox. Nano stove. One o'clock in the afternoon, that's the grandfather clock just striking. Fire blocks, nano stove. So I'm going to give that a try now and have a brew using my um, Tranger Triangle. That noise you can hear in the background is my dog Jess. I'm going to have a brew. Let's light up the uh, I'm not sure the light, the light now. Right, I should be able to position these legs so as to put any pot on there. So I'm going to put my Crusader pot on there. Oh, that's fine. Brilliant. I think I quite like that. That seems uh, an ideal sort of height for the uh, the Tangier flame to be licking up the uh, the pot as well. So maybe they designed that for the transier to go in. Well, that didn't take too long. Well, cheers, Frank. nice. Mm. That's very nice. Well I think um, with the mammoth tusk I'm certainly going to have my work cut out to convert that into a lovely pair of knife scales and a fire steel. Hopefully I can get a fire steel out of it too. Um, should make an interesting knife. I've never worked with mammoth before, so that's the very first time for me. I've worked with uh, with ivory, uh, not ivory. Sorry, I've worked with antler. 
But the um, the Neolithic thing that continues now with this knife. Uh, I've just finished uh, Mark's. That's Aussie Mark. Um, this knife is fitted. It's a three mil knife, and I've fitted it with um, bog oak. And this bog oak, I think, is around about three thousand years old. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, it's getting on with the Neolithic theme there. That's your knife, Mark. I just got to finish the sheaf off. The sheaf's built, and the dangle is built, and the fire steel's built. I fitted it with uh, my own mosaic pins there. I've got about a 28 degree, 28 degree bevel. Uh, you've got green liners. A straight tang, supremely sharp. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, bring you back in a minute when I've had my cup of coffee, and I'll show you the sheath. Where's the sheaf? I've just brought you back a little while later now, and I've uh, just finished the sheaf. I've just um, applied the, the, the snow proof, which is uh, this product here. I uh, don't know if you can see that. It's like a, it's like dubbing, if you can remember dubbing. And it, it, it sort of feeds the leather and, uh, and waterproofs it at the same time. So I've applied that, uh, the black, I dyed the sheaf black, fire steel loop and uh, fire no, steel here. here. Just needs a bit more fine finishing and that's ready to go. And the knife, a bit tight in a new sheaf of course, which is what you'd expect, but that will uh, That'll loosen up with age. So that's that's your one, Mark. Um, hope you like it. And I finished off another knife as well. Um, I'll go and fetch that. And this is the knife I uh, I just completed as well. <coughs> it's for for Nick. Uh, it's in walnut, four mil thick. With a, a beautiful tapered tang. So that's. Uh, don't know how well the camera's picking up. The finish of the knife. All hand rub finish. Beautiful taper. Mosaic pins. Uh, red liners, that you can see the red liners. Very nice knife. And the sheath is in the same process as the other one. I just finished the sheath for it. The fire steel will be finished um, probably tomorrow, and the dangler as well. And again, as you'd expect. Bit of a tight fit at the moment in the sheaf. Not going to come out, but that will um, that will loosen up with use. Um, what you've got to do if you do get a knife which is tight in the sheaf, just if you just break the seal, and then it should it should come out. Okay. Now, but my own knife was like that. Um, I wear it on my on my belt all the time. Uh, now you see after a bit of use in and out nice and easy. 
and the, and the, does it's got a nice it builds up a nice sort of patina if you like on the on on the wood you know with a continual rubbing in and out of the sheaf and use of the hands and that and uh, they really become quite tactile. Well, here we are some time later, and I've built up the uh, the danglers. I've finished off your fire steel now, Mark. Your well, your unit is completely finished. Your life's completely finished now. The dangler I did it the same way that I did it for Rob RDP. In that I didn't put a rivet there, so you can access it. Uh, put it onto your belt. Take it off your belt as one unit as well, if you want. Um, so that's yours. Uh, matching fire steel. And um, Nick's, I've managed to finish your dangler. You also got the conventional dangler with the uh, the rivet in there so you can't lift that bit up. And that's the way I have mine. Uh, just the fire steel to do on yours, Nick. I'll do that tomorrow. Finish that off tomorrow. Right. Might just nip out and take a couple of photographs of these now whilst the uh, the weather's looking reasonable out there.